A very good day to you. Once again, welcome to the program. I hope you're totally relaxed, because I am. I'm sitting on a stump here. And I want to speak to you about the light of the world. Jesus is the light. Isn't that right? And folks, you know what happens with light? Um, you can uh, go into a dark room. You can get a match. As soon as you strike that match, the light uh, takes over from the darkness. And that's how it is when Jesus comes into your heart. That's what happened with me. I was walking in darkness. Then I met the King of Kings and He lit up my life. I've confessed my sins. I'm free. And I know exactly where I'm going. I want to speak to you today about the light of the world. If you've got your Bibles, your agricultural manuals, would you go with me to the book of John? John chapter 1 and 2 verses, that's all. Verse 4 and verse 5. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. And this is what the Word of God says. In Him was life. In Jesus was life. And the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Folks, I hope that as I'm talking to you, you have seen the light. Literally, that's not just a cliche. I hope you really have, because we're living in a dark world at the moment. I think you'll agree with me. But the Lord is there to show us the way. You know, the, the Bible uh, is, um, it says in Psalm 119 and verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I was walking in darkness. I, in fact, I was walking in a circle. I was going nowhere fast until I met Jesus Christ. Now He's given me direction. He's given me hope. And He has given me light so that I can see where I'm going. But that light is not only for direction. It's for protection. Okay? The Lord protects us. We have got the Holy Spirit within us. When we give our lives to Jesus Christ and we are born again, the Holy Spirit comes and He lives within us. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is for another subject for another day. I'm talking about being born again. When you're born again, the Lord gives you insight to know what is wrong and what is right. When you're in the world, you don't know any better, folks. I, I, I'm giving you um, a testimony now. You, you, you just uh, do a thumb suck and hope for the best. But when Jesus Christ comes into your life, then you need to hear what that still small voice is saying to you. Now, I've got a, a beautiful little gift that was given to me, which I want to show to you. This is a protector lamp. I was preaching up in the north, northern part of England in a place called Leicester, in a beautiful town called Coalville. It's where they discovered coal a long time ago, just when the steam engines were on the go, and there was a tremendous explosion in the Industrial Revolution. Now, this is a protector lamp. And if you have a good look at it, you see it's got a little wick, okay, that you light at the bottom, and underneath here you put your fuel, and every miner that went underground, okay, in those cold mines, had to take one of these by law. Now, what was the purpose of this? I'm asking the smaller children there, and I know what they're saying, Uncle Angus. That's a lamp so that you can see where you're going. No, it's not, actually. I would have said the same because I'm a farmer. I don't have any experience with mining. This is a protector. This is something that gives you warning against danger. Now, all the miners watching this program know exactly what I'm talking about. I went over to England with a friend of mine who used to be in the, coal, in the gold mines in Johannesburg, and he told me that when he was a young man, he had to take one of these down with him every single day. Now, this is not a lamp to show you the way. This is a warning of danger. The miner wears his lamp on his helmet and then he's normally got a cable that goes down to his belt, and on his belt he's got his battery, which keeps the light shining. This is a warning against danger. This little wick, they light it up, and they go underground. Now, in the olden days, 
They used to use a canary. They put a canary in a cage and they'd take him underground. And as long as that canary was singing, they were happy. When the canary stopped singing, the miners had to get out of that shaft very quickly. Why? Because there's a gas that is given off underground called methane. Now, methane is highly um, inflammable. Okay, one match and the whole place will blow up. It's also poisonous. But the problem is you can't see the gas. And you can't smell it. You can't taste it. And that's what you need this little lamp for. This little lamp, you light it, and the, 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 the flame is like a, a, a normal yellow golden color. And you carry it down and you obviously put it close by where you're working. If that flame turns to blue, that means there's methane gas being released somewhere underground in the shaft. And what you do is you get out of that mine as quick as you can. Otherwise, you'll die. And that's what this is. It's called a protector lamp. And they gave me this as a gift. And I must say, I was deeply honored. And I'm going to cherish, cherish this and put it in a very special place in my house because Jesus gave us his Holy Spirit and I'd like to suggest to you that his Holy Spirit is our protector lamp a lot of people write to me they need to make a big decision Angus do we leave this country do we go to another country young men might write to me and say I don't know whether I should marry this girl or whether I shouldn't marry her some young uh, children just leaving uh, school They've just written their final year at school. They want to know, what, what, what do I do next? Do I become an engineer? Do I become a doctor? Do I become a lawyer? Do I become a preacher? And they don't know what to do. I want to tell you, I can help you as much as I can. And I'll pray for you definitely. I love praying for you. So keep sending those letters. And I'll, I'll give you as much advice as I can. But I want to tell you where I get my advice from from the protector lamp, from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives me insight through the Word of God. You see this book, the Bible says, the letter killeth. Now some young people are watching this program. You say, oh, when I read the Bible, it's boring. When I read the Bible, it's like another textbook and I'm sick and tired of studying. But the Bible says that the Spirit, okay, the protector, he gives you life. So we need the Word of God. You know that. I love this Bible more than anybody. But without the Holy Spirit, I can't understand the book. Now, I've always said to some guys, I haven't been to university. I have been to the school of life. I might not know this book as well as some professors of theology. But I want to tell you something now. I know the author of this book, maybe better than some professors, because I've walked the road. And I want to tell you that this book is very similar to me, to that protector lamp. Many a time, I'll get up early in the morning and I have to make a serious decision. Do I accept this invitation to go to a far-off nation and preach, or don't I? Do I accept the invitation to go and speak to those young people, or not? I'll give you a practical example. When I first got saved, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, Angus, I will use you if you will be honest with me and with yourself. In other words, the first invitation that you get to preach, take it. Don't wait until you get a whole lot of invitations and then go for the invitation that's the most lucrative, the invitation that's got the most people and the most exposure. No. So in other words, if somebody gives you an invitation to a little school, there might be 50 people there. And then you get another invitation the next week to go to an, uh, a rugby stadium where there's 70,000 people. Which one are you going to choose? The first one. <laughs> and the Lord tests you. We're coming back to that protector lamp. He wants to keep us humble. Do you really love me, Angus? Lord, you know I love you. Well, then do what I tell you to do. And you know, it saved my life many, many times. I want to tell you an interesting story. A few years back, I was invited to speak at a large church down on the coast, close to Durban. And about three weeks, maybe a month before, and I was so exhausted, I'd just come back from preaching overseas, 
I asked my PA to please give my apologies. I'm not going to be able to come to that meeting. Okay? They were very upset with me. I asked them to forgive me. I said, I just don't have any, any fire left. I'm going to just rest on that weekend. Listen to what happened. About two weeks later, I got a, an invitation from a large city up in, in, the, in the Gauteng area. And they were telling me that an international singer, who just happens to be my hero, okay, he's a Celtic singer. He sings uh, Celtic music, beautiful folk music. He is coming to South Africa, him and his band. He's coming from Ireland, from the Emerald Isle. And they are going to sing in this city. And they're going to have a citywide crusade. And they want me to be the speaker. Wow! Something that I've been dreaming about all my life. Now I have a choice. Remember, I've got a free weekend because I asked that big church down in, uh, on, the, on, the, on the coast to please release me because I wanted to rest. So theoretically, I've got a, a weekend of, I believe that the Holy Spirit, the protector, I believe he was testing me to see my heart. This is a once in a lifetime experience, folks. And I want to tell you, I had to eat bags of salt because I picked that phone up. And I told my PA to contact them and say, unfortunately, I can't come because I've already got an appointment. I didn't tell them that I'm sitting at home resting. But I, I want to say something to you. When God sees your heart and he sees that you really love him and you're sincere, he, he will move mountains for you. That happened to me once when I was drilling for water on this farm. I refused to use a diviner because I don't believe it's of God. I really don't. And so I got um, the geologists to come up and they did a, a, a test. They said, you've got a, a fault in the, in, the, in the rock here. Somewhere in this hundred meters here, there's water. Okay. And then I went and prayed and I got a spike. And I put the spike in the ground and I hammered it in the ground. And I called the water contractors, the drillers, to come and drill on that spike. And I'm telling you, we got water, abundant water. I believe that Jesus Christ loves me so much and he loves you even more because he's God. And if he can open the Red Sea and take the whole of the Israeli nation through the sea and then when the enemy comes through the water, close the water and drown them all. If he can do that, he can move the water <laughs> under the pig. And I believe he did that because he saw our heart. I'm talking about the protector, the Holy Spirit. So getting back to the story, I told them that I couldn't come. And I was really bleak. Folks, listen to this. This is not the end of the story. A week later, I got another telephone call through my PA to say that this band is now in Durban. That's about 180 kilometers away from us. They have a free Sunday. Can you believe this? It's one of the most famous bands in the whole world. They've got a free Sunday. They read a little book called Faith Like Potatoes. They would like to come up to the farm and come and meet me and my family. And if we really want, they'll bring their whole band and their equipment and they'll do the praise and worship in our little church on the farm. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And so they came up. We had an incredible service. God moved mightily. We didn't even advertise it, otherwise it would have been chaotic. The church was packed out. After we finished, this man and his team came down to my little house and my wife Jill made lunch for them and we spent time and we prayed together and we shared together and then they went on their way. Now that's how God works. The Holy Spirit is your advisor. He's your protector. He's your guidance. He's your leader. We really need to listen to Him, my friends. If we don't, we're going to hurt ourselves. I'll pick up this little uh, protector lamp again. And I'm telling you, it's a foolish miner that goes underground, right? And the miners are all listening and they're nodding. And tell your children and your wives. And he puts that down on a, on a rock. And that uh, little uh, flame turns from yellow to blue. And he ignores it. And he carries on working. He is actually committing suicide 
because he is going to die. That gas is going to poison him, and he won't even know it. Now, you say, Angus, what fool, excuse the pun, the Bible says, call no man a fool, what fool would disregard this information? When that canary stops singing, he's telling you there's danger, and you don't listen to him. You say, no one would do that. I mean, not even a 10-year-old child if you explain that to him. None of them would do that. And yet, how many times do you and I disregard the protector when he tells you, don't go there, and you still do it? And then afterwards, you've got the audacity, we've got the audacity to blame the Lord. Lord, why has this thing come upon me? He said, I never told you to buy that farm. But you knew better. Now you have to pay the price. You see, God forgives your sin, my dear friend. But the consequences remain. So young man, if you're sleeping with your girlfriend and you know it's wrong and you persist in doing that, you know what's going to happen. I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to make that girl pregnant. And then you're going to have to marry her because it's the right thing to do. And then for the rest of your life, you're going to live with somebody you don't really love. And you're going to blame God. No. God says you don't sleep with somebody until you are married. If you do, you are a fornicator. What is a fornicator? A fornicator is somebody that sleeps with somebody else that's not their wife. That's what a fornicator is. And the Bible tells us that fornicators are not going to heaven. You see, this is our protector lamp, folks. It's all in here. The Bible says, husbands, love your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. You say, no, no, that's for those days. No, this protector lamp is still working today, folks. To this very day, with all the modern technology, it still works this. Okay, you can say it's old-fashioned, but I'm telling you that it works. Okay, so why are you saying that this book is old-fashioned? This book has saved millions and millions of lives. And we are coming to the end of the age. That methane gas is becoming extremely toxic. You need to listen. You go and have an affair with somebody who's not your wife or your husband. You don't know them. You're having a weekend out. You end up getting HIV and AIDS. Whose fault is that? God's fault. You understand what I'm saying? We really need to get back and take note of God's word. Okay? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all of these other things will be added unto you. When you start farming the ground according to God's principles, things happen. When you start praying the prayer of faith, when you're walking in godly ways, God answers your prayers. You see, what we forget, folks, is the protector that I'm talking about, the Holy Spirit. He's not just a spirit. He is a Holy Spirit. What's the difference, Angus? Well, the difference is this. He will not look upon sin of any degree. So if you're walking in sin, okay, in other words, if you're stealing money from your neighbor, okay, if you're doing something that is contrary to God's word, you cannot expect God to answer your prayers. He won't answer your prayers. And he won't even listen to your petitions because you are walking in unrighteousness. The lamp is showing blue and you're not taking any notice. Right? When you come short and you see the light, okay, and you understand your mistakes and you repent, God will forgive you. But unfortunately, the scar remains. I know. I'm talking from experience. I did things before I, I met Jesus Christ that I'm not, a, I'm not very proud of. Okay? And I carry the scar on my heart. So for young people that are watching this program, you want to go and have a bit of fun. You want to sow your wild oats. What does that mean? You want to go and do a few naughty things before you settle down. Don't go there. Because first of all, it's not fun. That's number one. And number two, it'll cripple you for the rest of your life. You see, Jesus says, if your eye is offending you, pluck it out. Because it's better to go to heaven with one eye than to go to hell with two eyes. Right? That's exactly what he means. If this hand is causing you trouble, cut it off so that your body might be saved. This protector lamp is to warn you and me that we need to walk in godly, in godly ways. 
Then you sleep better at night. That's right. You're not concerned about somebody going to come around the corner and shoot you because you've stolen money from him or whatever. Pay the tax man what is his due and pay God what is his due. Then you'll have peace in your heart. You say, but Angus, I don't believe in this government. I don't care. The Bible says, render unto Caesar what's Caesar's and under, unto God what's God's. So pay what you owe. Let the Lord do the rest. Okay? Some of you watching this program are so concerned about what other people are doing, you can't do anything about it. All you can do is pray. But you know something? You can do something about it for yourself. So don't worry about what other people are doing. That's what I'm trying to do. Forget about that and start concentrating on your own life. Watch that flame. When the flame goes from orange to blue, then you must know you don't go there. I'm talking to a man now who uh, hasn't had a drink for years. God's uh, set you free. Sir, congratulations. Don't ever go into a drinking house again. No, no, but I'm free. I know you're free, but don't go there. So when your friends want to take you in the pub, I'll just have a Coke. No, you stay outside. You see what I'm saying? If you've had a problem with lust in your life, don't go past one of those male adults supposed to be shops. Don't go there. Okay? Walk on the other side of the street. Okay? Turn your back on it. The Bible says flee. Get away from the devil. Don't uh, take him on. Leave him. Start concentrating on the things of God. And I tell you what, you'll have a life that is victorious. You'll have a life that is safe. And most of all, you'll have a life okay, that your children and your wife and your friends can follow. That miner that goes down the mine with this, he's got men that are walking behind him. If he's not going to pay attention to that flame, they're all going to die, not just him. You have a responsibility. I'm talking particularly to the fathers of the home. Your child will not do what you tell him. He will do what you do. So if you beat up your wife, he'll beat up his wife. Not because he thinks it's right, because he doesn't know any other way. He'll hate himself for it, okay? If you've got a problem with people with a, a different ethnic uh, background or color or class or kid, he'll do the same. He'll do exactly what you do. Now you better get it right, because otherwise you're going to leave a legacy for that poor kid, and he's going to have to work through that. At the end of the day, ask yourself one question. What would Jesus do? Father, I want to thank you for my friends. I want to thank you, Lord. There are many people that walk in the wrong direction. But I thank you that with the new protector lamp from today, they'll start doing what you say, not what their friends tell them, but what you say, and you will confirm it through Christians. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, God bless you and goodbye. This could be We trust that you were blessed by today's program. To find out more about Family Time with Angus Buchan, Grassroots or upcoming events, please go to angusbuchan.com.